mostly like I was not actually able to clear the return round since we graduated in 2017. What were you doing for the last one year? Built, you know, a good portfolio before I actually reached Bangalore. Hey everyone, welcome back to Learning Bridge. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. So multiple times I have faced this query where people were asking that I have some sort of year gap after my graduation, post graduation. So what will happen to me? I mean, companies will be shortlisting our profile for the interviews, whether we'll be getting the jobs or not and many other career related doubts after the year gap. So to answer these kind of questions, I thought to bring someone who have been into this situation and trust me this person is truly inspiring because he was unplaced during his graduation time he took a year gap he was preparing for mtech he was not able to do well in the mtech part as well and people were just criticizing him. he was passing through with mental pressure was jobless for a year was getting rejected by the companies because of that year gap but the end result was truly amazing his hustle and hard work finally paid off and now he's working as a deep learning engineer at Sony this is truly amazing watch this podcast till the very end this is going to be really informative and motivating for you and if you like it then don't forget to give a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel then do subscribe and press the notification icon guys our guest Nihal has started his own youtube channel where he'll be teaching all the important concepts of the data science so link for his channel is in the description go check that out and subscribe to his channel as well and thanks to cryo.do for sponsoring this video so if you are someone who want to crack good product based companies lacking in latest technical skills along with practical exposure of real world projects then cryo.do is a go-to platform for you because they believe in learning by doing they are majorly focusing on full stack development programs and back-end development related programs you can see all the important details here the kind of real world projects you will be getting to work with and the kind of latest technical skills they are covering definitely very extensive program with good mentorship support and doubt resolving sessions good number of projects and micro skilling exercises they are also running one another amazing program which is fellowship program in software development where this point is really amazing placement guarantees so definitely this is a go-to platform for you free trial is available for all the programs you can definitely check that out and don't forget to check the link which is in the description because that can be really helpful for you when you will click on that link you will be landed on this home page where you can see one coupon code will be activated for you and you can use it to get extra 10 percent off along with good percentage for the scholarship and these will be the free perks which will is still available for you you can definitely use it for any sort of guidance so hurry up check this platform as soon as possible because this coupon will be only valid till 30th september thank you so much nihal for joining us on this podcast and i know your journey is quite inspiring and it will definitely inspire a lot of people out there so it would be really great if you can introduce yourself to my audience and what are you doing currently hey shashank thanks for having me on the show my name is nihal nihal Taharia. Currently, I'm working as a deep learning engineer at uh, Sony. Uh, majorly, I uh, you know work uh, with uh, research focused on product development, and uh, which okay. includes like computer vision and you know various various sort of uh, deep learning, you know, including deep learning as well as machine learning. I graduated in 2017 from IT DAVV. Uh, Institute of Engineering and Technology. From there, I graduated uh, with computer science degree. I have one year of gap basically. So mm-hmm. yeah, we'll talk about that part as well. So Nihal, I do remember when I had a first conversation with you, I got to know about this part that you didn't get any kind of placement from your college. So what happened during your graduation and why didn't you get any kind of on-campus placement? Yeah, yeah. So basically what has happened is for my case, I was you know already preparing for gate examination in my final year. I actually also set for very few companies. Uh, I was going like half-hearted. So <laughs> that turned out to be like, I, it did not happen. Mostly like I was not actually able to clear the written rounds. So okay. the interview part did not even happen like. You had a major loss. I mean, first, like you didn't get any kind of job in, in your campus, right? And after that, uh, being jobless and uh, I mean, it's not like that being jobless means you didn't get something from the college and uh, mm-hmm. you are in the middle, right? Uh, where you don't have anything, but uh, you need to plan something for future. The placement placement part did not happen within the college. And uh, mm-hmm. so the next option is like either I should, you know, keep applying outside or try to get some job or probably, you know, try to prepare for gate examination, uh, get, get the master's and, you know, the job process will become much easier from there. So I thought that, you know, basically I had interest in machine learning and deep learning. From third year itself, I started exploring uh, this area with the help of online courses. And uh, I kind Mm -hmm. of, you know, I kind of explored it and done some online courses, started also participating in competition. But because of the gate, I mean, this was like a place where, you know, I was kind of jumping between the gate examination and uh, the machine learning, you know, exploration part. So that's why, you know, that the gate part also did not happen very well. 
and again mm -hmm. that also did not went well so that is why i thought that you know i should just focus on the gate examination this time and i should just get the gate mm -hmm. examination that's what that's what i kind of you know take the approach at that time so talking mm -hmm. about the next question uh, neha like what kind of challenges uh, this year gap created in your journey were companies shortlisting you for interviews uh, or they were just uh, rejecting your applications because of that gap year the quantif quantification for this part cannot be done like so you might get you know rejected from 80 companies and you might get selected for 20 companies so i don't know whether the reason for that is like the uh, gap but i can definitely tell you the place where i got you know my resume got selected and the conversation started almost in the very first conversation i was asked about what were you doing for the last one year since you graduated in 2017 what were you doing for the last one year yeah I, that is something I, i have to explain that i was preparing for the gate examination but uh, mm -hmm. due to some you know misfortune the gate examination also didn't went well up to my expectation so i have to opt for you know applying for off, off campus only coming to the uh, you know companies shortlisting uh, i was kind mm -hmm. of i kind of you know taken a slightly different approach where i was mostly trying to approach startups because uh, mm -hmm. you know most of the job roles when it comes to data science and machine learning are presently either heavily in startups or you know either in the top tech, top tech companies so mm -hmm. i know for a fact that you know with the current situation i am in right now getting calls from top tech companies is not going to be an option so probably you know mm -hmm. i sh should shift for the startups only so majorly i focused on the startups only and from there i got decent responses actually so this is one thing you know probably probably i would advise uh, to the you know viewers as well that probably you know you can mm -hmm. uh, there are opportunities you should have to you know look look for much much more than what you are trying out currently basically you didn't get placement from college then failed in mtech uh year gap is struggling for job so how was your mental situation during that time and how were you dealing with that yeah so i mean that part was also quite difficult for my case at least it was not that difficult because okay. i am very much of an introvert i don't go out <laughs> not a lot of people come to my home no, less interaction less less you know less those kind of things come you come across and that's why i think mm -hmm. the major interactions which i had is like my parents and my very close to ones so those are like very supportive at that time even with even with the even when the gate examination didn't went well they were quite supportive they were they were like whatever you like whatever you think right for you go ahead with that we will be completely fine with that those are the support systems that i have received from my close ones and the family but at the same time some some kind of you know external entities also come into the part but that that those kind of minimal things can be avoided when i interact with lot of freshers who are in the college they are still confused like what they actually like the software development part the coding or problem solving part or exploring these kind of uh, domains like data domain and anything how did you decide that and without any job and internship like how were you improving on that you had the year gap and you are not a working professional into this big data or data science ml part how were you improving on those things uh, i think the first part of the question is like very interesting that you know how how you actually decide as to what you should pick up i think the simple part a simple answer for this part is like in the in majorly like the software cases whether you wanted to do development or you wanted to try out machine learning data engineering or mm -hmm. whatever like problem solving it's just that in 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 case of software it's very easy to kind of explore that part to kind of build that part try it out basically you can try out you can try solving problems if if you kind of find interest if if the momentum picks up and if if you you know keep liking that part you can keep doing that if you kind of try try out data engineering part if you build one or two projects and if you are liking it you can go ahead in that direction for i mean if i have to say for a fresher that they have to kind of decide on on to something and they are like kind of they have narrowed down at least two to three options from there they wanted to you know pick up either one or two options from there they can kind of build at least some some small small projects on on all of them from there they can decide like which of them interest them most i think that would be the logical way to go around it and uh, coming to coming coming to me basically when i don't have any sort of professional experience i don't have any sort of internship experience so mm -hmm. that was the first gap which i actually tried to fill which is that when i actually went out uh, after the year gap i was actually looking for internship rather than for a full time position so this this was also came out from the interviewer side like why you are actually looking for a internship position you are already passed out mm -hmm. like couple of times couple of instances this has happened with me that why are you actually looking for an internship so i mean my answer was very simple like i have i don't have any sort of professional experience i don't have any internship experience so i wanted to you know get i wanted to get experience and i wanted to learn how exactly things works in real life 
and from there i can build myself up then i wanted to get converted as a full time employee as well during that period how were you improving uh, on the like data science and ml part when you get the actual exposure of the real world problem then you can learn things you can enhance your skills so how were you improving on your technical skills for the data science and ml part uh, so for this i think what i have done is that i have built i built you know a good portfolio before i actually reached bangalore so you know i think in 2018 itself like andrew ng has launched the deep learning specialization okay so i took that specialization i did it i finished it like um, before even my gate examination as well mm -hmm. so from there you know i had built i had i had done one good specialization and i have also participated in couple of kaggle okay. competitions so that was my knowledge up until the point where i reached bangalore once i reached bangalore and once mm -hmm. i started you know you know uh, getting into real interviews getting okay. into uh, getting into real life problems uh with uh, within different domains then you know i started realizing that yeah, there is still gap mm -hmm. and this gap needs to be filled how i have learned i mean probably mm -hmm. people can have different learning styles but this is how i have actually learned at that time those are the gaps how i have filled i was interviewing continuously and i was i was just learning mm -hmm. right away in the interview so whatever the things i have learned from myself i have learned it from the courses from competitions but what are the th what are the things i really do not know i am just learning it by giving lots of interviews how did you get the opportunity for sony and how is their interview process for the data science role for freshers so i'll talk about uh, so how i got gotten my opportunity is to one of the talent hunters basically so okay. i have my profile on nokri and from one of the talent hunters reached out to me and from there we kind of scheduled the interview and go through it so in general what i mean the expectation from a fresher is like uh, mostly around like um, Uh, basic coding as well as uh, the you know, thorough mathematics behind the ml algorithms as well as the deep learning algorithms so this is where uh, you know the field of data science and machine learning slightly differ from regular software engineering where you need to have a decent amount of coding skills but mm -hmm. on top of that you need to have a thorough mathematical understanding behind Uh, the ml algorithms and the deep learning algorithms so mm -hmm. these are the two you know skills which fresher should be really really thorough about and frankly speaking the second part which is the mathematical part is something mm -hmm. which i have learned a lot by giving lots of interviews okay. i was i was i did not learn a lot you know by doing courses and by doing competitions so mm -hmm. I'll, i'll quickly point out like couple of things when you know people go for competitions so in mm -hmm. competition your main goal is to kind of you know uh, optimize on some form of matrix so if you are doing that you will not be doing you you prop you know necessarily do not need to have a you know very good understanding about the mathematics mm -hmm. if you have some basic understanding then it's like you are calling some methods and from there you can you know try to optimize on it and if you are again on top of that there is another part of feature engineering if you are you know trying to build feature engineering good feature engineering if you do not know completely math complete mathematics behind ml algorithm you can still score score good in the competition because this is something i personally have done <laughs> that is why i am saying okay at at that point of time i did not have you know good knowledge ab about the mathematics but i was still able to you know you know score good decent in competitions but mm -hmm. that realization has happened during the actual interviews that i really do not know very thorough mathematics from there i started fixing that part i will actually wrap up this session with one last final question so this question even uh, have two parts so first your suggestion for those folks who are having same experience like you like passing through tough time year gaps and demotivated with the job hunting's right so what's your motivation for them and how would you actually motivate them second part what's your suggestion for the aspiring data scientists for the folks who are having like the year gap or you know this kind of situation i would say like life hits you hard and you have to take it you have to accept it and that's just how it is so <laughs> don't get discouraged uh, have faith in yourself have confidence in yourself and whatever you are currently trying to do be best in that and mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead with the full confidence that you should be able to make your way through it it's mm -hmm. it's as simple as that you will have to have this mindset then only you will be able to uh, you know make make what you actually wanted to do this is about this is about the part and but coming to the ac actionable steps basically let me also come to the actionable steps so actionable steps is going to be if you are kind of trying to do the job hunting in that case when you are having kind of you know ear gap or you know stuff like that so there are like two cases which i would like to cover mm -hmm. one is that when a person is having ear gap after just after the college which was the case with me you know there are other folks who have 
uh, year gap after working for a couple of years probably so they also have the year gap because of you know x xyz reasons so I'll, I'll cover like the first part which was my case which i have personally dealt with one thing which i what i have done is that i have lower myself i have you know lower myself bar for myself slightly you know actually either looking for a full-time job i was looking for an internship just to get started why i'm suggesting this just imagine that a recruiter is having thousand of resumes almost everybody will be having one to two years of skill sets yeah. you are also having one to two year of skill set on top of that you are having two year of gap yeah. now it is going to be much easier for a recruiter to remove your resume because you have one to two year of gap while the others are others don't have any gap and they also you know claim to have the same skill set this is i mean this is something which nothing has to do with you, you. this is <laughs> recruiter is not your enemy so you have to understand this recruiter has the job to shortlist resume based on certain criteria. Now, if a recruiter get thousand application for two positions, he will probably, you know, take top 200 resumes out of which there is a very high possibility that your resume will go out for folks who are having, you know, after a couple of years of work experience who are having gaps. So what they can do is probably if they have, you know, three years of experience, they can probably look for job which have two to three years of work experience rather than, you know, three year or four year of experience, work experience this will okay. what they it will do is it will slightly lower the you know bar for them for the recruiter so that your application chance of your you know application selecting is going to be slightly higher this is what my you know my personal experience has been and logically this is what you know uh, makes sense to me at least so this is what okay. i would suggest uh, to you know try out if you are not getting interview calls, if you are getting interview calls, please go ahead with what current your strategy is. Coming to the aspiring data scientist, uh, definitely learn about the coding. Uh, learn mm -hmm. about, learn definitely about the mathematics part, uh, because this is something what I have been saying. Uh, you know that you know people just know how to run dot fit and dot predictive method. Mm -hmm. They really do not know about you know in depth mathematics behind things. The thing that frameworks has done is that it has made the job a lot more easier for data scientists or machine learning engineers. But because it has done, you know, make the job easier, what has happened is that people actually forgot, you know, or just they are just ignoring the uh, real mathematics on which foundational mathematics on which it is based on. Yeah. So please do not skip that part. And uh, within my experience, when within all of my learnings, I have also created YouTube channel where I actually focuses on the mathematics part. So you will be able to uh, you will be able to find uh, questions which are I mean uh, concepts which are formatted in form of questions so that mm -hmm. you will understand very you know very fundamental things about the about the algorithms okay. which is something uh, you know which is something a very important part when you whenever you are looking for some sort of interview and uh, that's a really great initiative as well from your side I mean sharing your learnings on your YouTube channel to help the aspiring data scientists so you can find his channel link in the description. Just go check that out and subscribe for amazing content. And yep, that was all about in this podcast, guys. Uh, thank you so much, Nihal, uh, for joining us and sharing your inspiring journey and motivating the people who are having the same experience like you. I'm pretty sure uh, it will help them to boost up their confidence and move into the right direction with full confidence. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sashank, for having me here. So that was all about in this podcast, guys. I hope you would have enjoyed the entire conversation with Nihal and whatever experience he has shared with us. If yes, then make sure to give a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe and press the notification icon. I will see you guys in the next weekend with another amazing podcast. Till then, just stay safe, stay home, take care of yourself and your family.